Hello, friends and family, and welcome to another episode of Live at Five Ish. Five Ish, hey, it's 505. We're in the fives. Praise the Lord, we're able to get out there still on the airwaves, though the enemy fights hard. He tries to keep us down, and we're just not going to let it happen. Jesus' name, or willing, or willing. I pray he's willing to not let it happen. I don't have any power over him myself, but if Jesus does, I know the one who does, amen. <laughs> so he can easily beset us. But greater is he that's in us than he is in the world, amen. Get an amen out there. Ooh, woo. Oh, well, anyway, here we are enjoying another beautiful day. We've been so blessed to have all of these beautiful days here. And it has been incredible. Pardon me for all the fuzziness on the camera here. Um, couldn't get my other uh, phone to work today, so I tried the computer camera. And hey, here we are. So that was a good plan, right? Well, I'm praying that today finds you guys well and full of faith. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. And do yourself a favor. Go get that free gift that God is giving to each and every one of us on our birthday, our spiritual birthday. The moment where we receive that free gift, we are born again. The moment that we decide to turn away from all that is sin, we are born again. When we decide that Jesus Christ is Lord of our life. Amen. That's the free gift that God has given. Boy, unwrap that present quick. And let me say hello to each and everybody, all both of you, <laughs> for joining us today. Um, uh, we'll just give a little bit of time for a little bit, a few more to come on. Hope they do. And I hope this message goes out as far as it can go. We hear stories that this these messages go all the way to Peru. That just blows my mind. I mean, blows my mind. Here I am sitting in the car. I remember back in old truck driving days when they had nothing but pay phones. And that was just after uh, the, the uh, telegraph, you know. <laughs> that, that was just a little bit before me, the telegraph. I came just after that one, pay phones. And you'd have to sit in line to get a hold of your dispatcher or whomever, they'd have one or two pay phones for, for 20 drivers. And everybody sit in line, you know, wait to get to talk to their dispatcher or loved one at home or how, however it was. And that was back in the days when the phone was attached to the wall and you had this real long cord, you know, and you'd wrap it around your finger about a hundred times and you'd, you'd do a dance and wrap it around, go wrap it around you or play jump rope with a dog. You know, a lot of fun on, on those days. Or you'd try to go get something on the counter and you'd have to stretch your arm out to, <laughs> to get it and then get back on the phone. That was kind of funny. Yeah, you guys remember days like that? You can put a like or a share and say something out there. Let me know that your, your heart is beating. I feel like sometimes I need to do CPR on it. You guys okay? <laughs> but I know sometimes we like to just be quiet and listen. And that's okay, too. I'm so glad. I am so glad every time I see a number pop on there that 120 is watching, uh, 2 is watching, 300 is watching. What? Wow, 100? I'm impressed when we go over 100. That's amazing. I can't hardly believe it. I'm like, wow, we, I wouldn't listen to me across the street. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad to do <laughs> Then all we're going to do is just brag on Jesus, right? So that's what we're talking about. That's what we want to hear. We're going to brag on the Lord. And we've just got a lot of bragging points here today. This is pretty awesome. Some of my favorite stories here and parables, because we know that Jesus always spoke in parables, teaching us, you know, according to those things. These, In these ways and in these parables, the, uh, the mysteries of heaven were hidden from the wise. And these are the wise guys, they, they still think they got it figured out. Oh, earthquake. They still think they got it figured out, you know. But uh, anyway, we just carry on. By the Lord, We know that the Lord resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So we just humble ourselves and just say, Oh, Lord, come and open our heart and mind today as we dive into your word and help us to see and to hear and to know your truth. Amen. Amen. Well, I think we wait. We've got to gather enough time to let everybody get here. 
And so let's open up the book of Matthew chapter 20. This is the laborers in the vineyard. And this is the vineyard. All the world, all of our life is the vineyard. It's pretty awesome. We get to go out and to do all we can to pull the weeds and to cultivate, to bring the water and to harvest and to plant seeds and to get rid of the little foxes or the foxes spoil the vines. Get rid of all of that stuff, right? And as we're uh, pulling the roots of, or the weeds of sin out, we're saying, hey, see that weed over there? Go and yank that out. That's taking vital life away from the vine and the branches. And as we go, we're all laborers. But it's interesting how this parable goes. You guys ready? Let's dive into it. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. So good. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius or penny for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. Then he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace as well. And to those he said, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. And again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did the same thing. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why have you been standing here all day, all day long idle? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, go also into the vineyard and work. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last group to the first. Those who are last shall be first. Those who are first shall be last. Interesting. Now, when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each one received a penny. And when those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more. They worked all day long, but each of them also received a penny, the same wage. And when they received it, they grumbled at the landowner, saying, Hey, these last men have worked only one hour, equal to us, who have borne the burden in the scorching heat of the day. But he answered and said to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a penny a day? Take what is yours and go. But I wish to give to this man the same as to you. I wish to give to the last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is mine? Or is your eye envious, evil and envious, because I am generous? So that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. As Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered unto the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles, to mock and scourge and crucify him, and on the third day he will be raised. I'm going to pause right there for a moment and go back into the, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. It's interesting to see how the Lord is constantly looking for those who will work. The owner of the house and the owner of the vineyard, he went out to hire laborers to go and to work into his heart, into his fields and, and to be a part of the harvest and the labor of his fields. And we know ultimately that's talking about our life and ministry and just doing the work of God. As we go into the to the vineyard out into the fields and he says look for the fields are ripe for harvest go and be a part of that he's sending all who will believe in him out to be a part of the harvest and out to spread his word to share the gospel this is planting seeds this is also when we're sharing the truth and the word of god we're we're doing what we can to pull the weeds of sin out before it encroaches and totally takes out one of the vines you know this is something too to notice that it's several parts of the day that is mentioned. When he agrees to the laborers for the denarius of the day, he sent out to the vineyard, he went out about the third hour. 
first it was in the morning, and he sees people standing out idle. And then he went out the sixth hour. He also given in to the vineyard whatsoever is right. And so they went. And again, he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same. And about the eleventh hour. You think about a day and the day that we live, you know, every, they're talking about the doomsday clock. It's almost midnight. It's almost 12. It's almost the last hour. And it, it's all in about the 12, 12 hours or the time of the clock, you know. And uh, it, one day would represent in this scenario a man's life coming to the last hour, the final hour. The 11th hour would have been almost the final hour of his life. We see ultimately that we all have the same reward. It doesn't matter if we come to the Lord early in our life, which is a great blessing to come to the Lord early in our life and then be get thrown into a, be able to get into the vineyard and to do his work. Isn't that one of the greatest blessings ever? This is the greatest job in the world to get out there and to share the gospel and to just love your neighbor as yourself, to do the best we can for each other and trying to do all things in righteousness and truth and trying to work out his ways. But that's us going into the vineyard too. You know, we're not only to, and then it says they, they joyfully went in and did the work. And we can joyfully work with him. So if we do it early in our life, if we come and, and believing in him and receiving him, and then entering into the ministry and the works of God, we can do it early in our life. And we are greatly blessed because our whole life can be filled with story and experience with God. And we have this great reward, eternal life. The grace of God has come upon us. And we have this great reward, eternal life. I compare that to a penny. <laughs> uh, I'll reward you. I'll pay you for your hire. And there is reward also, you know. But, and then the same one later in life, some will spend most of their life missing out on opportunity. I know, though I gave my heart early to the Lord, I was like that prodigal son. And this is another story that kind of lines up with the prodigal son. There are many there are many things in here. We can spend a week on just this one parable. Um, there, are, there are similarities to the prodigal son story here too. But as it is played out, we see that it's the same reward for those of the third hour, and the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, and the eleventh hour, the very last minute. God is full of grace and love and mercy. He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But you know, at the end of the story, there was one, there were some that were angry with the Lord, thinking that it wasn't fair. We bear the brunt and trial and pain and the heat of the day and all the afflictions and we get the same reward as them actually it's not they received a greater reward because they had a life filled with grace filled with relationship with the lord and with the the owner of the vineyard and they may be missing that point right there their life was filled with joy and goodness and opportunity and great uh uh, abundance, right? If you're working every day from, it says one day, but I'd say there's abundance there because of all the other added riches and just knowing those people, the ones, the owner of the vineyard. So there's abundance in that. Now, though, they came upset about the deal that the other ones got or they Came at the 11th hour, worked only for one hour, and got the same wage. Well, what that shows is uh, something that's a little off in our spirit. If we're coming to the Lord and doing this work for reward, we're coming for the wrong reason. And it should be that we are joyful for all who come and enter into the, the harvest. All who come and are part of the work. And to help each other, 
you know, to be able to do that work. But instead, we become jealous. Why is this one getting better, the same reward as I am after I've done all this work? We get this deserving mentality. None of us deserve anything good. But we receive good. For the Lord causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust because he is good. So we receive all of these great rewards in our life because God is good. But we come expecting great rewards because of the good works that we've done, because of any good works that we think that puts us in a place that we're deserving of eternal life. He says, no, it's not so. It's not so. It's not by works as any man should boast, but it's by the grace of God that we receive our rewards. Help us to be in the right spirit. Let's pray that always. Lord, put a right heart and spirit in me continually. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. And help us to go and to be content with all that he has given us. And then we move on. And like I say, everything that we're reading in these chapters, there's, like, there's a multitude of layers. We can spend forever in one chapter and never get to the bottom of it. That's the beauty of God. But we are doing just a kind of Quick dive, just a quick dive to look into the book. Amen. So let's move on to the uh, to the next story. Now, as Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves, and on the way he said to them, "Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the to to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death." And will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and crucify him. And on the third day, he will be raised. Here toward the last, his mind, he was constantly talking about this. So it shows all that was in his heart and mind. And it was coming up closer and closer. And so as these things were pressing on his heart, he would speak about them. But then all of a sudden, it says, Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, bowing down and making a request of him, as he was speaking. And he said to her, What is it you wish? And she said to him, Command that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit on your right and one on your left. Because Jesus answered, mm -hmm. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? If they had known what he was saying, boy, he was about to drink the cup of persecution and crucifixion. And they said to him, we are able. And he said to them, my cup you shall drink. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, this is not mine to give. And it's true, they were, they were martyred. The disciples were all martyred. They did take they partake of the cup of the Lord. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And hearing this, the ten became indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentile of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It is not it is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. Let us be less to be more. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. If we are to do great things. We are to minister, help, to help others, to help lift up others. And not to be ministered to. Sight for the blind. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. And two blind men sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And the crowd sternly told them to be quiet, but, but they cried out all the more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Boy, that's seeking the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, isn't it? They were crying out with all their voice. Then Jesus stopped and called them and said, What do you want from me? What do you want me to do for you? 
And they said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened and moved with compassion. I love this part. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him. That is precious to me. I love that. And I love these few verses here. What is it that you would have me do for you? Oh, Lord, let us have regain our sight. Let us have our sight. We want our eyes to be open and moved with compassion. Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him. I have a question. The moment that we see, do we follow the Lord immediately? The moment that our eyes are open spiritually, do we immediately follow, do we immediately go to the place where we've been getting fed, where we've heard the word brought to us in such a way that that has opened our eyes, and then we go and we follow the Lord together? That's a great thing right there, isn't it? And just little by little, as we see the word opened up to us every day, we can gain wisdom. And this is a great opportunity to come to have our eyes opened on a daily basis. It's a, this is why it's a joy for me to open up the book and to, to try to get this, this electronics functioning <laughs> and to share the word that our eyes can be opened. And I praise the Lord that he opens our eyes each and every time that we come together. I just ask that the Father will continue to give us these opportunities. And I just want to say thank you to all that, that are joining us. And if you don't mind, just put your likes out there and, and shares and all of those things. And help us to continue in service and walking and working with him and for him and in him. Amen. Well, I pray that you guys be careful out there and uh, do well. With all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. See the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And above all else, remember, love each other and trust in Jesus. Amen. Have a good day. I'm going to shut this one off. Ah, there it is.